Hi, Kirsty. Lovely to connect with you today on um, on Blab and what's it like down at the bottom of the South Island? Oh, it's a bit cold today, to be honest. I had to put my jacket back on. We've had nice sun for the last couple of three days, but unfortunately we've got a bit of rain going on. So, But that's okay. It means we get the farmers through the door. <laughs> so why do you need the farmers through the door? What happens within what, – I mean, what do you – tell us about what you do. Kirsty? Um, well, myself, I work at Muir's Radiators um, and basically when it's when it's yucky weather like this, we, um, we get the farmers in the door because they can't use their machinery and they can't use their tractors, so they think, well, let's get the radiator fixed while we can't use them. It would make sense. <laughs> so when there's downtime, you actually fix your machinery so that in the uptime when you need it, it goes. That's exactly right. Their downtime is our uptime. Absolutely. Now, understanding a little bit about Mia's radiators in the background, I would assume you've grown up in that radiator world. Do you want to tell me what it's like growing up in and around a radiator shop? Um, to be totally honest, um, I didn't spend a lot of time in here when I was younger. Um, it wasn't until I got to having my own children and um, Mum and Dad decided that they were going to purchase the business off the um, previous owner who Dad had worked for um, since he left school. Um, and then I started spending a bit more time here at Muir's. Um, I officially, officially started working for them, um, oh, I think it was about eight, eight or nine years ago they purchased the place and I started working for them there. And um, when I first started, I didn't actually start in the office I was out on the bench fixing the radiators and that's how I learned everything I needed to then which then gave me a, a better perspective of when I was talking to the clients on the phone or you know writing up their invoices so to speak um, I knew what I was talking about Absolutely. And and for me, it's always very interesting to understand around, you know, the craftsmanship that goes into repairing a radiator. I don't know if you have any, any um, input around that. It's an art. Repairing radiators, manufacturing radiators, it's an art. You've got to have a love for it. You, you've got to have a good knowledge of, of how they work, but you've also got to have that... Um, uh, I mean, I know myself, when I look at a radiator that's being repaired, um, we do paint, for instance, the brass tanks. We do paint them when we put them back on. And I think looking at it, it gives it that, it looks like it's being um, repaired with love, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, visually, I think they need to look great when the radiators get picked up again. Absolutely, and isn't this a whole industry of love? If we if we look at some of the repair work and the vintage repair work that gets done, um, it, it's there's so much passion and love that goes into this assembly component of a car or of any other um, piece of equipment. That I'm sorry, you cut out then. I didn't hear what you were saying. <laughs> I was just saying that isn't that true within the field that you work in because whether the radiator goes into a piece of farm equipment or a car, there's a lot of, of love that goes into that, that repair and passion that goes into that repair and craftsmanship that goes into that repair. Absolutely. I mean, if, from what I can say, if you don't love what you do, then you're not going to do it well. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you don't have a passion for it, or you don't you don't want to spend the time, what's the point? Mm. Kirsty, I think the thing that I'd probably like to explore with you is, um, you know, radiators is not often seen along the lines of a Go Green project. Yeah. And I believe that Muir's Radiators is part of the AdRad um, 0800 Radiators Group, was involved with a, a an exercise down on the South Island. I wonder if you can tell us about your Go Green project. Um, we were involved with. with the Environment Southland um, and basically we had a lot of clients question um, what what sort of makeup uh, our antifreeze had, whether it was safe for the environment, so to speak. Um, and that's why we chose to go with um, 
it's called propylene glycol and that's our coolant um, and basically if by mistake because you're not supposed to tip it down the drains but if by mistake it's gone down there it's not going to harm anything um, it's not it's not um, just trying to think of the right word it's not harsh um, it's, it's been interesting to see and I didn't quite understand the full um, implication that um, how toxic antifreeze stroke coolant can be so what you're saying is in the in the mix of coolant types there are some coolant types that are better for the environment yes, yes than there are, absolutely we also have um i know here at muir's we also have another a brand of coolant um it's called monopropylene glycol and that is specifically designed for um classic and vintage um, vehicles and their cooling systems the modern antifreeze at the moment is is quite harsh and the older style um, cooling systems can't handle that so we've got this monopropylene we call it our Muir's vintage and it is less harsh on the cooling system um, also one of the other main reasons we got it is because we have a couple clients that their houses uh, have solar panels and um, we use the monopropylene and they put that in their um, solar panel system that's less harsh as well So are we saying, I didn't realise that solar panel systems oh, I needed didn't either until we had a couple of clients things. come in and we did some research. Okay, excellent. And um, in terms of the, um, the types of work that you currently, for example, if we look at the typical day in the world of Muir's radiators as part of the OS 100 radiators brand, what does a typical day look like down in your well, radiator? Well, at the shop? moment, um, I know in the workshop this morning, we have about four or five um, what we call plastic tank repairs. Um, basically, that'll be like your, your Toyota Camry or Subaru Legacy or anything like that, um, that need to have their plastic tank taken off and give it a good clean out and um, put it back together we've just finished um, pulling apart uh, Mercedes truck radiator um, we do get a few of the heavy equipment you know like the truck radiators in um, more so probably in the colder time we've just come out of winter so we had we did have an influx of quite a few truck radiators getting done um and fuel tanks actually we do fuel tank repairs um i know it's a very um i wouldn't call it specialized but it's it's not common practice um to repair fuel tanks but it's something we do down here so we have about four or five fuel tanks sitting here at the moment waiting to be repaired as well excellent so i mean ultimately the the expertise can span multiple facets of the community so what we're saying is obviously there's a, a requirement within the solar panel industry for some of the antifreeze to go through there we're looking at the farming community we're looking at the trucking the roading your general cars the um we're looking at the vintage environment we're looking at the hot rods absolutely. um i mean you cross absolutely all cool just before we close it, um, Kirsty, a question to you, um, and I know it would be what you've learned from osmosis, so, you know, somebody else may have an additional bit of information to share, but if you were sitting at the side of the road or, or your vehicle was going and you suddenly realised that the, radi the um, heat gauge was higher than it should be and you thought there was a problem, what do you recommend that somebody actually do at that point um, in time? If it was me... I would, I, I do know to turn the heater on really hot and have it blowing. I mean, you may have to have your windows down, it'd be really hot in there. Um, and basically with the heater going, that takes a little bit of stress off the radiator and that should hopefully allow you to get to the nearest garage or um, be able to pull over in a safe place to be able to ring 0800 radiator, for instance, and um, work out where your nearest radiator specialist is. Well, that's absolutely excellent now i know you've got some way to go through and so i wanted to thank you for just having this little bit of a chat with me and sharing some of your knowledge it's been, it's been awesome and um thanks very much and i'll catch up with Sounds you good.